Hello and welcome to my tutorial for Sean Petit's creative team. This week I'm making quick watercolor note cards using Sean's geometric leaf stencil. I needed to make some cards to send for thank yous after Christmas and I thought that watercolor would be gorgeous through this stencil. Oh, and uh, mom, dad, grandma, you can watch this after you get your card so it doesn't spoil the surprise. I followed the directions on the back of this can of Easy Tack to spray it to the back of my stencil. Once it was dry, I securely uh, adhered it, pressed down pretty hard to my watercolor paper and began the process. I chose to use hot press watercolor paper here because it doesn't have the tooth or the little bumps that cold press watercolor has. Then I was sure that the stencil would stick securely to the watercolor paper so that the watercolor wouldn't seep underneath. Then I just began to play. I flooded the little spaces of the stencil with my color. I chose um, different colors here that would blend together, the purples, the reds, the blues, so that when they did their cool watercolor effect and mixed together, they would just blend beautifully. And once in a while I spr splattered or sprinkled or flicked some of that watercolor on there as well because I like the randomness that that sometimes adds to the watercolor. Um, as it blends and dries and then once I was finished and liked how it looked I waited for the watercolor to dry before I removed the stencil. So I wanted to do another one using more of a pattern than some random plopping down of color. So I chose to use warm colors here, starting with the red in the larger part of the leaf and then work my way up orange to goldish to yellow. And as I'm flooding the little spaces, I also add a little bit of the red into the orange, the orange into the yellow. So it kind of makes a more smooth transition between the colors. Also, the stencil was still sticky from the glue. so. I was able to put it down on this watercolor paper and it still sealed uh, perfectly to the paper. And I didn't clean my stencil before I did this one as well. Um, I like the little leftover watercolor and how it kind of adds a little bit of a, kind of a grunge maybe as I'm putting down the new watercolor so it's not just a solid color but it kind of adds some shadowing or some different tones and colors into that watercolor. And you'll see as I make some more card fronts that I let the stencil get a little dirty, but it makes some great effects. Again, I waited for this to dry completely before I removed the stencil. Um, through the magic of video editing, you didn't see that drying time, but it is completely dry. Now I'm working with some cool colors the same way that I did that first one with the purples and reds. I'm doing it with blues and greens. I did clean the stencil, let it dry overnight, and reapply the glue to the back. I wanted to see um, how well it would work when I reapplied glue and starting from a clean stencil, I wanted it to have, you know, maybe more of a little clean look here. Basically I was experimenting to see what a second layer of glue would do on the back of the stencil and it worked just as well as the first. Um, there's no really difference to what I'm doing here from the one with the warm colors. I still flood the little spaces with color and splatter some paint to move it around. I kind of just made sure that I had green and blue and light blue all over so that it would be a cohesive look.
I like to take advantage of the properties of watercolor so that when it's still just a little bit wet, you can put another color in it and it will do its magical blending. And I love how that worked in this project. Once it was completely dry, I removed the stencil and I love this one as well as uh, the warm colors. So I had been using just a smaller round brush on the other ones and this time I grabbed a flat, I think it's a filbert um, brush. I wanted it to be able to make lines and hold a little bit more paint because here I'm going to do a rainbow. So my goal was that the colors of the rainbow would blend but not too soon. So I first did the stripes of every other color so that those would dry a tiny bit and that when I added the colors in between it would only blend on the edges. So I'm doing my stripes with the red, yellow, blue, and then I'll go back and add the colors in between and kind of help them blend a little bit. I move the color so that they move next to each other. And then I didn't want it to look like um, completely straight lines. So I do go back in and where I see a little line, I grab a smaller brush um, towards the end of this, you'll see, and make the lines not look so much like they're lines and more blended. That's one of the neat things about watercolor is that you can reactivate it, which is sometimes a problem too. But um, I went back and reactivated that watercolor in the stencil so that it didn't look so liney and more of a natural rainbow. And then once this was completely dry, just like the others, I then removed the stencil. So I wanted to play one more time with one of my favorite color combinations. I love the split uh, complementary color palette of red, orange, and purple. And so I wanted to play with that on stripes. I cut the ends of my watercolor paper off. The stencil I uh, didn't fit on in the first couple and just stuck those under the stencil and the glue securely fastened it to the stencil and to my tabletop so that the color didn't seep underneath. I left my stencil really, really dirty on purpose because I didn't want the colors to be bright. I wanted the leftover paint to help kind of grunge up the colors so that they would, when they blended, they wouldn't be the bright purple and bright. It would mute it or tone it down a little bit. And I do this twice, both with the ends of my paper in this combination, just having fun and flooding those um, areas. And then when it dries, lifting the stencil. Now I'm simply cutting my uh, watercolor pages into the sizes to fit my card fronts. Um, I'm making these A4 size cards which are five and a half by four and a fourth inches and I cut the watercolor fronts just a fourth of an inch smaller than that so that it would leave a white border um, around that card front. I was originally going to put this on colored cardstock but I actually really liked it on white because it added another white border which is really natural to how that stencil looked. I also like to make sure that I spray my watercolor with a fixative or a varnish just in case the uh, letter would get wet in the mail. And I show a picture of that can that I used at the end of this tutorial. And that's it! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for quick watercolor cards and that inspired you to use your stencils in a new way. Thank you so much for watching!